four years ago. I was sitting in the corner of my room, tears streaming down my face, saying over and over again, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. Day in and day out for weeks. Guess what happened? Nothing. Not a damn thing changed. Was I doing it wrong? Everyone tells you that you need to forgive in order to heal. But no matter what I did, it just wasn't working. So I was about to throw in the towel. And then my life turned on a dime in a series of fairy tale events that took me from absolute misery to mystery and magic. I found myself traveling the globe, studying and training with shamans in the Amazon, gurus in India, and being initiated as a Toltec in Teotihuacan. Through the healing and teachings of these masters, I soon learned that forgiveness is not something that you do or even can do. The real kicker is that forgiveness is not even necessary. This not so little nugget made me incredibly angry. I found myself in that same corner having a terrible two tantrum. But the truth was undeniable. When I chose love and responded with compassion and understanding, I found there was no longer anything to forgive. I realized that we lose sight of the fact that we all make mistakes. Has anyone here ever made a mistake? Yeah. Then buckle up and pack your bags because we are going on a guilt trip. Right? That's how it works, isn't it? We make a mistake, find a corner to hide in, and then spiral into a self-created hell of regret and remorse. Then we pack it all up in a suitcase that we drag around with us so we can remind ourselves of the time we did that terrible thing. We are the only species on this planet that has a tendency and some wacky desire to pay for our mistakes more than once. A cat that gets its tail slammed in the door might be a bit cautious the next time it goes through. But it's not going to sit on the couch with a bucket of ice cream and a bottle of wine lamenting over how careless it was. But isn't this what we do? Why? Why can't we be more like the cat? Learn from the experience and leave it be instead of judging ourselves so harshly. Anybody ever been hurt or wronged? What happens next? Finger pointing and the blame game are on, F-bombs are flying, and we are stuck in a loop of judgment and accusation, cramming one more thing into that big old suitcase. Here's the big question. If you plunge into regret and remorse when you make a mistake, couldn't it be possible that the person that wronged you is going through exactly the same thing? I know it's cliche. We all make mistakes. It's how we learn. But we get so caught up in what we believe to be right or wrong that we become judge, jury, and executioner. We are drunk on bitterness. And forgiveness does seem impossible. It seems impossible because we have become so disconnected from who we are. You see, the soul becomes distracted when it seeks healing and forgets its true nature, which is love. Distracted and trauma-based souls become so disconnected from love that they attempt to heal and numb the pain by any means necessary. This can manifest as addiction, depression, stress and anxiety, violence and depression. I know these characters of darkness intimately. Today, my life is magical beyond anything I ever, ever could have imagined. It is full of peace, 
love, joy, wonder. But it wasn't always this way. I have experienced every form of abuse, sexual, physical, emotional, most at the hands of my mother, the person that was supposed to love me the most, hurt me the most. I was called useless and worthless every other day while dodging pots and pans, fists and potato peelers, growing up fearful and trusting no one. I created a barrier of bricks and steel and barbed wire around me, hoping it would buffer the attacks. But all it did was create a prison. I learned how to lie because truth had let me down before. I started stealing money from my parents and their friends in a feeble attempt to rebel. I was oh so pleased with myself when I finally showed no emotion when the attacks did come, thinking that in some small way I had won a victory. But it was too late. The real enemy was within, and it crept around in the darkness, attacking at will. The seeds of unworthiness, guilt, and shame were planted. They grew inside me, twisting and tangling like an invasive vine, choking out all hope and happiness. I no longer needed anyone else to tell me that I was worthless. I knew it, believed it and told it to myself with every breath I took. Trying to stop this broken record was like trying to sneak the sun past a rooster. Impossible. I made one mistake after another, flirted with the boundaries of addiction. Passive, aggressive, and manipulative behavior were set to autopilot. The guilt and resentment were killing me. So it's no surprise that one of my favorite songs growing up was Simon and Garfunkel's Hello darkness, my old friend, I've come to talk with you again. I needed to forgive so much. My mother, myself, the strangers of abuse. But I was stuck in the wash, rinse, and repeat cycle of my story. The story I had hung on to for so long, the one where I was the victim and the villain, the one created out of fear and judgment, built bitterness and shame. My story made it easy to justify poor behavior, to deflect and defend rather than to place any value on the qualities of love and compassion. This is how I judged myself and knew myself to be. And in this toxic wasteland, I wandered until I met those shamans and gurus. And the hamster wheel started to slow down. I began to understand that if I could create an inner landscape of thistles and poison ivy, I could also create a beautiful garden of tulips and roses. When I chose to connect to the love in my heart that was patiently waiting, forgiveness was no longer necessary because love is incapable of holding a grudge. I understood that my mother's behavior was simply due to the fact that it was all she knew. As I chose to respond with compassion, I had a deep understanding that she didn't just get up one day and decide to terrorize her child. She was trapped in her own spiral of regret, guilt, and shame. She had tormented herself and took it out on everyone around her. I saw that our lives are full of many different experiences. It is why we are here to experience all that life is. Some experiences are of adversity, 
that give us the opportunity to learn and heal. Others are of peace and joy that give us the opportunity to know love. As my hamster wheel came to a halt, a beautiful and amazing thing happened. Feelings of love and compassion kept rising for myself, for my mother, for all those who had wronged me. I wondered how terrible it must be for them. I understood in, in the attempt to numb their pain, they had lost sight of love and made a few mistakes. What happened next left me speechless. Almost without warning and certainly without trying, the negative energy of guilt, shame, bitterness, and resentment vanished. I felt free, free from the past, free from the poison I had been drinking for so long, free of my story. I was free to create a new one. Forgiveness was no longer necessary. When I stopped pointing fingers out there and in here, I was able to accept my experiences without judgment. I understood that there is a bigger picture, that it's not about right or wrong. It's not about sin or morality. It is about humanity. Life, this precious life, is about experience, trial and error, Success and failure, tears and joy. Carl Jung once said, who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. If we continue to ignore our inner landscape of guilt, shame, bitterness, and resentment, we will have no hope of salvaging humanity we will have no hope of healing. So right now, in this moment, if you're comfortable, please close your eyes and breathe deeply. Connect to your heart. Notice it. Embrace it. Feel the love within it. This love, this is who you really are. Ask yourself, is there really anything that needs forgiving? What does my heart say? What would love do? And please open your eyes. You may not always have a choice about what goes on out there, but you do have a choice about how you respond in here. It's time to choose love and respond with compassion and understanding because love will never, ever let you down. Thank you.